One way to acquire an electrostatic charge is to come in close contact with another object that consists of different material. Cotton, for example, has greater attraction for electrons than wool. Therefore, when these materials come in close contact with each other, electrons transfer from wool to cotton. The cotton now has an overall negative charge, and the wool an overall positive charge. Their opposite charges account for the static cling when you attempt to separate them. The easiest way to neutralize a charged object is to connect it to the earth with a good conductor called a ground. If the object is negatively charged, the excess electrons flow into the ground until it is neutral. If it is positively charged, electrons flow from the ground into the object until once again it is neutralized. Close contact between two neutral objects is not the only way to acquire an electrostatic charge. If a neutral object is touched by a charged one, there will be a transfer of charge as electrons flow from the charged object to the neutral one. And how do we detect charge? A metal leaf electroscope can be used to detect relatively small quantities of charge. When it's touched by a positively charged rod, electrons move from the electroscope onto the rod, leaving an excess of positive charge. As a result, the metal leaves repel each other, evidence that the electroscope is charged. Have you ever noticed that an electroscope, when approached by a charge rod, seems to anticipate what is about to happen. The leaves diverge even though the rod does not make contact. If the rod is removed, the leaves collapse again. What's going on here? Well, let's apply some of the theory we've learned so far. We can visualize the electrical condition of the rod and the electroscope by showing a representative sample of the charges. Since the electroscope is metal, electrons can move with relative ease within it. If, as a result of their random motion, some electrons come close to each other, the repulsive forces that they exert on each other ensure that they will very quickly move apart again. positively charged rod moves towards the knob, the charges interact. The electrons in the electroscope will try to move towards the rod. And as they do so, will flow out of the metal leaves, making the leaves positive. As a result, the leaves repel each other and diverge. When the electrons in the electroscope move towards the rod, they get closer to each other and repel each other more strongly. So, for each electron on the knob, the attractive force of the positively charged rod is balanced, both by the repulsive force of the other electrons near it and the attraction of the positively charged leaves. If we look at the electroscope as a whole, we find that the top is negatively charged and the bottom is positively charged. Since no charge has been transferred, the electroscope as a whole is still neutral. It has, however, experienced induced charge separation. If the positively charged rod is removed, the electrons will no longer remain concentrated in the knob, 
but spread out uniformly throughout the electroscope. As a result, the electroscope no longer has induced separation. Let's bring the rod close to the electroscope again. This time we'll ground the electroscope while the positively charged rod is held nearby. Remember that the electrons in the electroscope are attracted by the positive charge on the rod. The positively charged leaves are also attracting electrons. The ground allows electrons to enter from the earth. As a result, the leaves of the electroscope become neutral and collapse. If we remove the ground and then the rod, look what happens. The repulsion of the excess electrons will cause them to move as far away from each other as possible. The leaves which are now negatively charged diverge. Because electrons entered the electroscope when it was grounded, it now has an overall negative charge. Surprised? We succeeded in charging an electroscope negatively using a positively charged rod and a ground. Watch this sequence. Did you notice that throughout the entire sequence, there was no exchange of charge between the rod and the electroscope? We call this process charging by induction. It occurs when a charged object is used to charge a neutral one without discharging itself. Since there was no exchange of charge between the rod and the electroscope, the rod can be used to charge any number of electroscopes. Each electroscope will acquire a charge opposite to that of the rod. Charging by induction often occurs in nature. Thunder clouds frequently have a strong negative charge, which repels the electrons in the earth below. The result is an induced positive charge on the ground immediately beneath the cloud. If the charge difference between the cloud and the ground becomes great enough, a massive flow of charge results. And some people actually call it lightning and thunder. Benjamin Franklin was the first to demonstrate that lightning is an electrical discharge. He flew a kite in a thunderstorm. When he attached a key to the kite string, the sparks that jumped from the key to his hand showed that the clouds carried an electrical charge that was being conducted by the kite string. Do you really think so? Of course. In the next program, we will investigate this flow of charge. carry an electrostatic charge 
can touch a metal object, you sometimes get a shock. The shock is caused by the sudden flow of electrons between your body and a conductor, in this case, the metal tap. The atoms which make up a conductor are thought to consist of positive ions with a number of loosely held electrons which move at random, drifting towards one nucleus and then another. Opposite charges placed at each end of the metal cause these electrons to drift from the negative end to the positive end as they proceed in their random motion. Ions also experience forces of repulsion and attraction. But if the material is a solid, they will not be able to move about freely. Transfer of a charge through a solid can only be accomplished by the motion of electrons. But why does taking off a sweater result in electrostatic charges? Before you get dressed, both the cotton shirt and the wool sweater are electrically neutral. When the wool and the cotton come in close contact, however, things begin to happen. As a group, the atoms making up the cotton fabric have a stronger attraction for electrons than the atoms making up the wool. As a result, some electrons transfer from the wool to the cotton. When the first electron transfers to the cotton, the overall charge of the cotton changes from neutral to negative one. But the charge on the wool has changed as well. It has one more positive than negative, resulting in an overall charge of positive one. As more and more electrons are transferred from the wool to the cotton, the cotton becomes more and more negatively charged. And the wool becomes more and more positively charged. There's a limit, however, to the number of electrons which can be transferred before the positive charge on the wool begins to attract some of them back. Both the cotton shirt and the wool sweater consist of billions and billions of atoms. So instead of trying to show all the charges, we'll just show a representative sample on each garment. When the two materials come in close contact, we can show the charge transfer from the wool to the cotton in this way the cotton with its excess of electrons becomes negatively charged. The wool with its deficiency of electrons becomes positively charged. Note that during the process, the positive charges never move. Both the cotton and the wool are good insulators. So the charge transfer is limited to where there is contact between the two. If you are wearing a negatively charged shirt, how can you neutralize it? Easy. Simply touch a metal water tap. The excess electrons will transfer from your finger to the tap until a negative charge on your shirt balances the positive charge. The pipe to which the tap is attached runs deep into the ground. This connects to the earth, which is neutral in charge. Because of its vast size, the addition of small amounts of charge, or its removal, does not significantly affect the earth's overall charge. 
The process of connecting something to the earth by means of a conductor is called grounding. So far, we have shown what happens when we carry a negative charge. But what happens when we carry a positive charge? Suppose you decide to wear a rubber raincoat over your cotton shirt. Again, the initial electrical charge on both garments would be neutral. Now, rubber has a stronger attraction for electrons than cotton. As a result, electrons transfer from the shirt onto the rubber raincoat. The raincoat now has a negative charge, and the cotton shirt a positive charge. If we remove the raincoat and wear only the positively charged shirt, look what happens when we touch the water tap. As usual, there's a spark. This time, electrons flow from the earth into the arm, and in so doing, neutralize or discharge the shirt. Grounding, the process where we connect a charged object to the earth, will discharge that object, whether it is positively charged or negatively charged. How do we know when an object is charged? The metal leaf electroscope can detect charge, even in very small amounts. It consists of a metal shaft, which has a knob on one end and very delicate metal leaves on the other. The shaft is insulated from the container which encloses it. When the knob is touched by a charged object, look what happens. We can explain this phenomenon by applying some of the theory we have just established. The initial charge on the electroscope is neutral. When the electroscope knob is touched by a negatively charged rod, a number of electrons jump onto the neutral knob. We call this process charging by contact. Remember that each electron repels every other electron and the repulsive force they exert on each other will cause them to move as far apart as possible. Since the electroscope is metal, the electrons are not confined to the knob, but spread themselves uniformly throughout the entire electroscope. Because the electroscope now has a negative charge, the leaves will repel each other and diverge. If we touch the electroscope with a positively charged rod, the result will be the same. This time, some electrons transfer from the knob to the positively charged rod. The resulting shortage of electrons leaves the electroscope with an overall positive charge. And accordingly, the leaves will again repel each other. Charging by contact isn't the only way to charge an electroscope. Next program, we'll demonstrate a technique in which the charging rod never touches the electroscope.